What is going on guys and today we're going to be talking about the second half of Signal Bullock. Oh. Alright, so again, this is one of those videos that is not for my typical viewer, which is generally basic training soldiers, people going for basic training. But if you are somebody who's going to signal basic officer leadership, of course, anytime soon, this video is going to be specifically for you. I just graduated from Signal Bullock and now I'm going to talk about the second half of Signal Bullock because I already talked about like the first week and I've talked about the first half. And now this video is going to pick up basically where the, the first half video you know left off, obviously, because we're going to talk about the second half. Uh, and just going to go over some of my experiences and just in general, kind of the things that you can expect to do. Now, honestly, the second half of Signal Bullet kind of flew by a little bit. There was a few kind of big topics that we had to cover, but overall, it was kind of like you're covering this, you know, actual signal stuff. This is where you kind of also continue on messing with a bunch of actual signal equipment, and you're moving from topic to topic, from piece of equipment to different pieces of equipment, and things kind of just seem to go by really fast, and then you got the last two weeks where you got your FTX and your graduation week. So essentially, the last half is just essentially those six weeks of actual training and preparing for the final FTX. Now to get started with this video, I'm gonna kinda say the second half of Signal Bullock is basically gonna start right around whenever you're gonna do combatives. Now if you watch my previous videos, you know that A Flow and B Flow, the two different platoons or the two groups of uh, the two platoons, are flip-flopping what they're actually doing. So you're gonna have one group doing one thing, another group of uh, platoons doing a different subject, and they're basically flip-flopping, but for us, the second half, in my opinion, really started with combatives. This is when you're gonna have two different days of combatives. It's not really anything difficult. A lot of people think in the army, whenever you do combatives, like you're gonna know how to fight really well. Like, no, that's that's not the case. Like, you're gonna know like a few basic things, but honestly, like it's almost a waste of time. Like if the army is watching this, like it's almost a waste of time. Like if you're gonna teach combatives, it should really be like actually teaching you something that you're going to remember and retain and actually get to spar a little bit versus two minutes of doing something then moving on to the next thing and it's just very 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 basic stuff now the next big thing that you're going to be moving into which is a huge component of Cigna Bullock and that is Win T, which is the Warfighter Information Network Tactical, I believe. And I'm gonna throw some links down in the description as well in case you wanna actually look at some of the stuff that I'm talking about. But when T is huge, you're gonna be focusing a couple of weeks on this, two weeks, I believe it's two weeks exactly, but about two weeks, you're gonna be focusing on when T. There's two different parts to this. You're gonna be going over increment one and increment two, which is on the move and at the halt, right? So if you guys don't know anything about Army equipment, Army stuff, essentially signal is communications, right, obviously and you're going to be learning some of the army equipment for communicating at the halt, which is stationary, not moving, and you're gonna be learning some communication equipment on the move, which is obviously like you're in a convoy, you are on the move. So you're gonna be sp you're splitting that up. One week is on the move, one week is at the halt. You're gonna learn about some of the different tactical hub nodes, uh, the satellite terminals and stuff. You're gonna be learning some more about the waveforms and the radio frequencies and stuff, how those can communicate you know, what data rates they can actually communicate on. And then during this, you're gonna do this a few times, you're going to do op order, operation orders. And these are gonna be days where you spend the entire day just preparing an op board. And then at the end of the day, you're gonna present that op board to your tax. And it's not like a graded assignment, but if you do do bad, if you do poorly, you're gonna to have to come back later in the day or even the next day at some point and re present your op board to the tax. So the first thing you're gonna learn with the WinT is communication at the halt. You're gonna learn all that different equipment and then you're gonna have an op board, some kind of mission that you have to create an op board for using that equipment that you just learned and everything. You gotta be pretty detailed with the stuff. You can't just be in general, blah, 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 blah. So make sure you take good notes. Make sure you're actually understanding this stuff because the tax are gonna be asking you questions about decisions that you made with your op board and your plan and all that jazz. And then you're gonna do another op board for communications on the move. And just a little pro tip for you guys, make sure whenever you're creating these op boards and you have your, your signal plan on how you're gonna communicate, make sure you have those redundant links, right? So if one form of communication fails, you have another form of communication in which you can communicate or whatever. So your pace plan, your primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency plan is super important. 
And so some of the next like systems and stuff they're gonna be learning whenever you're at Bullock after Win T is like the battle command system. So like in attack or in a talk, some of the systems that they have. Specifically the CPOF, that is a big one that I'm gonna mention specifically because if you're in a unit and you're in there curious if you're gonna learn about CPOF, the command post of the future, as I believe what that stands for, you are going to get some hands on that for just one day for just one day but it actually is some pretty good training on that you get to do a few things but it's not super super complicated knowing how to set it up and everything is the most important part uh, but you're going to learn a little bit about cpof and then you're going to kind of switch over after you learn about all these little specific equipments about the battle command all that stuff you're going to then do your switch x your comex and your ftx right the last week is graduation i'm not even worried about graduation like it's just graduation you're out processing all that stuff but your switch x is important your comex is important and your ftx is important so i'm going to kind of talk about that the switch x if you guys didn't know it's kind of like a preparation like a crawl walk run phase so you're running at the FTX, you're walking on your Comex and then you're crawling on your Switch X. Your Switch X is basically what we did. We did some very basic stuff, right? So we went over some first aid stuff. We went over operating attack. Attack is what you're gonna be doing during the FTX, which is where you have some different units and stuff who are out doing things. They're maneuvering around, conducting their missions, and you at the headquarters area you are basically tracking everything. You are tracking information coming in, you're processing it, and you're distributing information down and upwards. And you're gonna do a little bit of a mission kind of on that. And so throughout that day of your one day of your switch X, you're gonna be kind of doing a crawl phase of some of the things that you're gonna need to do on your FTX. And then during the COMEX, this one was really important because this is where you actually have all of the equipment, your vehicles, your Humvees, your LMTVs, everything uh, kind of lined up and ready to go and you are testing all of your equipment before you go on your FTX, right? So you're testing all your equipment, you're getting everything set up, all the frequencies, the radios, you wanna make sure you test it all and make sure it is good to go because this is gonna be super important because when you get to your FTX, like you don't obviously wanna leave and then get out there and be like, oh gosh, we can't communicate to whoever the platoon sergeant is or whoever the platoon leader is at the time. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna be get out there and be like, oh gosh, we forgot to check if we can actually communicate with attack and let them know that we're you know, doing all this stuff or if we take contact whenever we're out there, we need to let them know that. So during the comics, that is your time to actually make sure that everything is working and you are good to go for the next day whenever you actually leave for your FTX. Now something that I wanted to mention that I did kind of skip over whenever I talked about the switch in the comics is your FTX, the final FTX that you're gonna be doing, you plan for it, right? So I was a platoon sergeant for the planning phase that week of uh, preparing the back brief and the op board for the final FTX because that's what you're gonna do. The platoon leader at the time and the actual platoon sergeant at the time, they're gonna be like kind of like graded positions or whatever, but the platoon leader and platoon sergeant are going to get your platoon, you're going to prepare a back brief one day, you're going to brief the tax on the back brief format, and then the like two days later, you will do an op work, and you're gonna take the same mission, you have a specific mission that you're gonna do on the FTX, you're gonna take that same mission and create an op board, and then you're gonna brief the tax on your op board for your mission that you're actually going to be conducting at the FTX. This is gonna be your first mission that you go on, right? So whenever you guys do your switch X and your COMEX, you are going to know what mission that you are going to do during the FTX, at least your first mission, and I'll talk about the FTX in a little bit, but for your first mission, you are going to know that and you're gonna prepare for that. You're gonna have your op board, you're gonna have your plan, and you're actually going to go and conduct this. And honestly, that's pretty much it leading up to the FTX. You're gonna have planned it all out. Like, you're gonna have freaking planned that mission out like crazy. Your mission, first mission is honestly gonna last like an hour and a half, two hours uh, after you leave, and then you're gonna kind of switch everything. So now I'm gonna talk about the FTX. It's not super, super, it's not a huge big deal, right? It's not a huge big deal. It's like four days long. It's really only three days. The last day is like a mission where we did like a mission for the Ruck March, which was not really a mission at all. It was just like, get up, get ready. You're gonna get in the helicopters, which were LMTVs, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit too far ahead of myself. Now, for the FTX, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about, 
the mission that you plan for, the PL, the PSG, your platoon, the mission that y'all plan for and you coordinate with the other platoons, you're going to conduct that mission the, the morning of, of your FTX. You're gonna get in your vehicles, you're gonna SP, and you're gonna leave and conduct your mission. If it's a retrans, if it is a coalition for a single channel um, a network where you have like the coalition or the, the atropian government or whatever, they're going to communicate through you guys, through the retrans to the TAC, and then you also have a heat close mission, which is like a huge freaking antenna that you have to put up. And then you have the TAC mission, right? So you're gonna have some of these different missions. And the one that you are planning for, whether it's a retrans site, that's your mission. You're gonna go out there and you're going to set up your retrans. It's gonna take you like two hours or so uh, from the actual leaving, going out there, setting up your security, setting up your retrans, you're gonna put up your OE254 antenna, which I've showed you guys on Snapchat or Instagram. If you guys were follow me through my training process, I've showed you guys that. But you're gonna set up your OE254, and then really, like, once your mission is done, once you have that retrans set up, they're going to index you guys. They're gonna, you're gonna have some captains that are basically watching you and kind of grading the PL and the PSG whenever you're doing your missions. But after, you're, after you index, your mission is over. The freaking thing that you planned all week for. You completed the mission in two hours, and now they're gonna throw another mission at you. You're gonna do three missions a day. That is what you're gonna be doing every day unless you have the TAC. If you have the TAC, you're operating the TAC, you're gonna do that all day long. All of the other platoons are gonna be conducting three missions a day, which is the Coalition Force one, you got the Retrans, and you got the Heat Close, and you're just gonna cycle through all of those. And after every single mission, you're going to switch out your platoon leader and your platoon sergeant. And they're going to get freaking 30 minutes to prepare an op board and get ready to move on to the next mission, which is kind of crazy because the first mission, you have an entire week to prepare. You have a switch X, you have a com X, and then for your next mission, you have 30 minutes to prepare for it. So it kind of sucks to be that second platoon leader and platoon sergeant for that. Uh, it's not super difficult. I don't want to say that it's like really hard or whatever, but like the second day you go out there, you're going to do the same missions over and then you're, you're going to have kind of like a flow of things to do. You're going to have different platoon leaders. They might have different locations for you to go at. For us, we didn't get any contact from the enemy the first day and it wasn't until the second day that we actually took contact from the enemy, which was like IDF. Um, and then there was like an enemy who was out in the woods and we took direct contact from him We had to do like the whole battle drill one alpha thing. So the enemy contact wasn't super super crazy It wasn't like oh my gosh, you know, it, it wasn't that big of a deal The main mission for your FTX obviously is the signal stuff the signal stuff You're not trying to do infantry tactics too much out there. You're doing signal stuff You're not going out and setting up patrol bases. You're setting up security and you're gonna do signal stuff so it's not super difficult. So if you're not setting up the O2 before, the heat close, whatever, you're pulling security on the gunner seat in your Humvee or you're pulling security laying down or patrolling whatever your PLPS you decide to do. So the FTX, it's pretty simple, honestly. Again, you're not setting up any patrol bases. Every night for us, we went back to the TAC and we slept. Uh, we obviously pulled fire guard and everything. Uh, we ate MREs two times a day, hot meal once a day. I don't think there's really much else I can say about the FTX. Aside from what I did mention, uh, which was the, the final mission, which was a ruck march, that was super easy. What they did was uh, at the, the last night, they assigned a new company commander, a company like EXO or first sergeant or whatever, and then they had the different platoon leaders and platoon sergeants, and we had like a mission to convoy on helicopters, which were LMTVs, to a certain location. They dropped us off, and we pulled security, we took contact, and then we basically just rucked back to where we had our pinning ceremony. And then that was pretty much it for the day. We got back, turned in our gear, and we were done for the day. So I know this video was obviously gonna be one of my longer videos because whenever I do these where I'm trying to tell you guys my like specific experience on stuff, I don't wanna kinda just gloss over things, which, you know, going over eight weeks of experience and doing that in 15 minutes or so is obviously glossing over a lot. Uh, but I did just want to give you guys a quick heads up. If you're going to Signal Ball, some of the stuff you're going to do, you're going to be doing Win T. You're going to be doing, uh, you're going to be learning some of the battle, uh, the battle command systems like CPOF specifically. You're going to be learning all the differences and capabilities of all of the different Win T equipment that the Army is using currently. If your Army active duty, 
you're gonna be doing that stuff probably a lot more than reserves and National Guard people are gonna be doing. National Guard is a little bit different because they might have to use some stuff to communicate with local governments during natural disasters. Reserve isn't gonna have it so much, but if you do have any other questions about Signal, Bullock and specifically, or maybe Bullock in general, leave a comment down below because I may or may not do some more videos on Bullock. It wasn't super complicated or crazy like basic training was, but I will do some more videos on it if you guys have some good questions. So leave your comments down below. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you subscribe for some more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That would be even freaking better. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat if you haven't already. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day. And I will see you later. Drop.